Welcome back. Scientists, marine researchers, international leaders and environmentalists from 120 countries are in Portugal this week at the United Nations Ocean Conference. Among the global participants is Anya Waite of Halifax. She's CEO for the Ocean Frontier Institute. And Ms. Waite, thank you for taking some time. I know it's a little later there. Good to talk to you, Todd. Um, let's start off with some of the comments that the UN Secretary General made. He was quite blunt in his speech to the, uh, the assembled. Antonio Guterres said, we are in an ocean emergency. What did he mean by that? The message here has been, we are not doing enough to combat climate change. That has to start with attention to the oceans. And the oceans are actually supporting us as we try to move to our climate goals. So the message here has been very, very strong and for also from John Kerry and others that without taking care of the oceans, without understanding them better and observing them much better than we have before, we will not be able to reach our climate goals. And we are in a climate crisis for which we have not done nearly enough as yet. Uh, it, you talk about a, a sense of urgency. Right now, there's no international rules to ensure ocean sustainability. Why not? And what's holding that up? I think policymakers and people worldwide have many different motivations. And saving ourselves from climate change should be the highest priority, but it isn't always. We also need to feed ourselves. We have industries that need to undertake activities in the ocean and we're not always careful about mm. what we do and that needs to change. Your group in particular, your colleagues in particular and yourself are pushing for an international ocean observatory. What would that look like? What would that do? What we're aiming for, Todd, is for nations to come together and really implement a step change in ocean observation so that we can get the data we need for the ocean we want. Um, the UN Oceans Conference is a great place to have that conversation. And I think what people are realizing is that the ocean is absolutely central in the climate fight. And that really hasn't been front and center until really just the last year or so. I think we're really recognizing that now. And many nations are cl claiming that message and agreeing to step up to do something. So. You know, we know more and more about the effects of climate change on land, but is it still relatively unknown what the effects are at sea? Or are we just at the beginning of our understanding? We are learning more and more about the impacts at sea. If you think about the deep ocean, for example, we know very little about what exists there, let alone what the impacts are. So we're slowly building an understanding, but we urgently need more information. And we also need to measure our carbon sinks much, much better than we have before. So the ocean absorbs, has absorbed about 40% of fossil fuel emissions. That absorption is likely to change. It's likely to decline, but we don't know how fast. And it could have a catastrophic failure, in which case we could be at the point of having all our great work on land, moving ourselves to net zero, swamped by ocean carbon release. And that's something that no one in the world can afford. There was something of an agreement at COP26 um, last, uh, well, this time a, a year ago. Are you looking for something similar at this Oceans Conference? Is that the way, is that, you know, you're trying to come up with some sort of declaration that way? So the Oceans Conference is not a COP, so we don't expect these kind of uh, big agreements at the okay. same level internationally, but there is a lot of work towards the international agreements, and there's signing of declarations between nations to pledge to work together. Canada has done a lot of great work here. They've um, pledged to reduce illegal and um, unreported in fishing. Um, that's been a great success here and a great story for Canada. So there's a lot being done here. Um, it's just not at the intergovernmental level that the COP26 um, had or that we will see at COP27 in Cairo coming up this November. When you talk to your colleagues from other parts of the world, I mentioned 120 countries that people are, rep are, are represented by people there. What do you tell them are the major issues here? Are they the same as what you're hearing elsewhere? Or are there anything particular about where we live and what we face compared to others say? 
I think what Canada has is one of the longest coastlines in the world. And in a sense, that brings us a responsibility to take charge of some of the big ocean issues. Um, our understanding of deep sea biodiversity, the carbon absorption of the ocean, um, illegal fishing, all these issues are extremely important. And in Canada, we're seeing a lot of movement. We saw a recent ban on uh, some single use plastics, which is a, a great step towards um, preventing plastic pollution in the ocean. Here at COMP, there's an entire workshop dedicated just to plastic and marine litter. Um, I was there today. There's a big consensus that the, what Canada has done is going in the right direction. And uh, the whole world is now working towards trying to reduce marine litter and understand where it moves. So um, that's a great outcome. And we're seeing ourselves very, very well aligned with the international conversation. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, and uh, hopefully we can talk to you more about it when you uh, get back on this side of the ocean. Anya White, of uh, the uh, CEO of Ocean Frontier Institute, we appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for filling us in on what the, the important work that's going on there. Great to talk to you, Todd.